Uh, Stephen Eskenazi well batted. It was a big total to chase tonight itself and John Simpson had a great partnership going to have a go at it, but in the end it was just a bit too much to chase down. Yeah, I think probably 180, 190 was par on that wicket. Um, incredible considering it was the same wicket we played on the other day where 140 was a winning score. So we're a young group, we're adapting. I'm proud of the fight and effort we showed there as a young batting lineup. Um, and another day, you know, we're getting 200, we're back in the hunt there towards the back end of earnings. Was it the difference, I mean, you know, simple things to ask questions about, but was it the difference of a nighttime game? Was it a bit quicker tonight? Maybe a bit of dew, the floodlights on, did it come on a bit better? Yeah, I think so, chatting to the grounds and they think these hybrid style wickets might sort of use the dew slightly better than maybe the other wickets. Um, yeah, we thought that's why we ended up bowling first because we, th we thought it would skip on a little bit more, but to be fair, it played pretty good the whole way we threw the game. So. Yeah, disappointed, but some good cricket to watch, no doubt. It was a fabulous partnership, wasn't it? You're looking great out there, but it was um, it was a you, it was one of those that you just had to take it all the way through, which is easier said than done, and a very hard thing to do. Yeah, very difficult when you feel like you've played you know a belter of an over, and the run rate's almost gone up there. Um, when you get 220G, you have to put, do something pretty special to win the game. But I think you know the Middlesex T20 side of the past could have petered out there for 130, 140. So real positives going into next year. And even the Middlesex side of the past, probably at the interval, the game might have been done. And that wasn't the case tonight. And it wasn't the game for, for much of that second innings. Absolutely. We've been freed up by the coaching staff to go and play our game with no repercussions. Um, and it's amazing how fearless some of these young boys can come in and play. Um, come in play a natural game, someone like Crackers going 6-4, you know, that's a sign of things to come against a good Surrey side. We're always intimidating, so hopefully it's a glimpse of, of some consistency that we can keep taking forward. Did you see the dent that he put in the wall above the score box up there? It was pretty impressive. No, I don't, I don't want to take the credit for it, but he hit him for four, and I said, Crackers, I want you to hit Father Time with this next one, and he gave a pretty good go, to be fair. <laughs> They're going to have to go and fix that at some point. They can send the bill to him. but um... Tell Gus to put his hand in his pocket. <laughs> Could be waiting a while. <laughs> um, no, for Middlesex, the you know it's another one that they'll come away from tonight feeling a good performance, but obviously not a victory and not the points. And that's obviously been something across the group where the performance levels have been OK, but now it puts the pressure on those last three, doesn't it, to go and get those victories? Yeah, I think the story of our season so far in red and white ball cricket, um, showing real glimpses of some of the stuff that we know we have in our dressing room, um, but struggling to get over the line consistently. You know, it's an interesting season with, with not a whole heap to play for, obviously, but we have to take some confidence going forward and we have a massive amount to play for these last three games. So three good performances and we can go into the break with some real positives.